Good morning, church, and welcome to the first of our weekly reflections as we look back on the daily readings we're doing. Choose Life, 365 readings for radical disciples by Simon G. Simon came to us in November and really encouraged us. A number of us bought uh, this book. He left another 20. All of them have been sold, and quite a number of you have ordered the book from Amazon as well and committed uh, to going through this uh, throughout a whole year. Each week, Simon will give his own reflection, uh, which we'll put a link to in the new sheet. And we thought we'd do our uh, we'd do a reflection as well. So we started together this 365 day journey on the 1st of Jan. And we read about not resigning ourselves to failure, but partnering with God in the resolutions and the decisions that we make, realizing and believing that they would go on to change us and shape us. On the 2nd of Jan, we were encouraged to think about our fitness. We were then asked whether we were really ready for Christ's return. We were told to focus on God and not pursue a mirage or an idea of God, but God himself. We were encouraged on the 5th to be bold and not ashamed, uh, to pick a fight, to stand for a cause. And finally, today on Friday the 7th, we've read about having faith and not fear. <laughs> what a week, what a roller coaster of topics and thoughts. Some days I got the point in just a first read. Some of the other days I felt I wanted to ponder and reflect on it a few, um, a, a bit longer. Perhaps like me, not every day gelled with you. We didn't re feel you connected with every single day. This is one of the ones that really did click with me. January the 5th, bold, not ashamed. That day, Simon included an abridged version of a pledge made by a young Rwandan man. And I've got the full version of that and the background to it here. The background came from a, a pastor in Rwanda, Dr. Robert Moorhead, and he tells the story of a young man from R Rwanda who was forced by his tribe in 1980 to renounce Christ or face death. He refused to renounce Christ and he was murdered on the spot. The night before, he had written the following commitment, which was found in his room, and it reads this. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have the Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. The decision has been made. I have stepped over the line. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away or be still. My past is redeemed. My presence makes sense. My future is secure. I am finished with I, I am finished and done with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colourless dreams, tame vision, mundane talking, cheap giving and dwarfed goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plaudits or popularity. I don't have to be right, first, tops, recognised, praised, rewarded. Uh, all regarded, I now live by faith, lean on his presence, love with patience, live by prayer and labour by power. My face is set, my gant is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions few, but my guide reliable, my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, lured away, turned back, diluted or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of advers adversity, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, back up, let up or shut up until I've preached up, prayed up, paid up, stored up and stayed up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go until he returns, give until I drop, preach until all I know and work until he comes. And when he comes to get his own, he will have no problem recognising me. My banner is clear. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I first read that many, many years ago. And when I first read it, and again on Wednesday, it made me want to stand up and punch the air and say, yes, that's what I want. That is what I want. 
However, I realise for some, you may have had the opposite impact. This day, the fifth, or any of the other days, they're all hugely challenging, aren't they, in their own way. Every day I'm being asked whether or not I will make a choice. And sometimes, perhaps just sometimes, I just don't want to. And it could be easy for me to feel like more and more stuff is being heaped upon me as I read this and as I walk through it. And we have a choice. We can take it one of two ways. But we must not forget that the Christian call is a tall one. The journey is a steep one and it challenges us to the very core of who we are. But the wonderful promise that Jesus makes us is that we do not do it alone. Jesus tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And when we make this covenant with Jesus to follow him, we give him all of our lives and he gives us eternal life. But he gives us so much more. He pours everything of himself into us so we can fulfill our side of the covenant. It's like Jesus sits on both sides of the table. He sits on his side with all of heaven, the kingdom of God and eternal life behind him. And he comes round to the table when we make that commitment and he sits on our sides with our failings, our mistakes, our misgivings, our idiosyncrasies and all of our stuff. And he shows us and he takes us to his side. He equips us, he encourages us and he enables us to live this tall, this tall life, this steep journey each and every day. So yes, every day when we read this, we have a choice to make. And there may be those days when it feels just too much, or I feel like I've just been beaten up. Remember, Christ is with you every step of the way, equipping you, enabling you, even carrying you when he needs to. So let's move into week two together. Let's be encouraged, let's be challenged, and let's choose life. Church, have a great day.